Okay, this is going to hopefully be a relatively brief video on holstering of a handgun. Uh, so many people think that when holstering a handgun, you just grab it, shove it in the holster, and you're done with it. That's all there is to it. There actually is a little bit of technique that can be used when holstering a handgun to do it better, do it safer. Uh, one of the most fundamental things is your hand position, namely your thumb position, when holstering the handgun. So, first thing we need to do is make sure that we have an empty handgun. For demonstration purposes. As I was saying, most people think that you just take a handgun and shove it in the holster. Something I learned several decades ago, uh, and it was covering holstering a revolver, but the bottom line is it works no matter what you're holstering. That simple technique is, rather than just shoving the pistol into a holster, gripping it as you normally would for firing, put your thumb on the back of the weapon. If this was a revolver, my thumb would be on the back of the hammer. Uh, if this was an auto loader that had a hammer on it, this was normally fired first pull, first shot, double action. Once again, my thumb would be on the back of the hammer. Uh, if it was a semi-automatic handgun that has a hammer that is normally carried cocked and locked, like a 1911 where the hammer is back and the safety on the side is on, I would then put my thumb off to one side so that my thumb would clear the hammer or possibly my thumb with the hammer back here, whatever is most comfortable. But at any rate, put the thumb on the back of the firearm. What that does is several things. Oh, if you have a revolver, your trigger finger should be in contact with the cylinder of the revolver. Of course, if it's an autoloader, it should be somewhere indexed along the side of the frame. What that one simple thing does for you is if it's a revolver and you've got your thumb pressing on the back of the hammer and something gets caught in the trigger as you're putting this handgun into the holster, as the trigger pulls back you're going to feel the hammer start to move back on you and you'll know, wait a second, something's wrong. I feel part of the gun moving that shouldn't when I'm holstering it. Things that cause that, these lovely little deals, as you can see on my little sweater here, it's on the weak hand side, which is nice. keeps it away from my gun. On some jackets that are on both sides, that can be a problem. If that gets into the trigger guard, that can and has at times for some people depress the trigger and cause the gun to fire. Put your thumb on the back. It tells you on a revolver if the gun is being fired. Another thing that it does is it tells you if the slide is moving out of the battery. If something were to get into the holster, it could move the slide slightly out of battery. That could even result in something getting caught in between the slide and the barrel face, keeping the firearm out of the locked forward position. It would be out of battery, and if the firearm's out of battery, of course it can't fire. So you don't want that to happen. So as you're holstering, if something gets caught and pushes the slide back, which would take the gun out of battery, you feel that happening and you know that something's wrong and it's time to pay attention. So it's just a simple thing to do. Another very nice thing that it does is on a weapon such as mine, which has a little feature that a lot of people hate, but I like it. Grip safety. This particular gun has no external safeties. It doesn't have a frame safety. It doesn't have a squeeze cocker like the Heckler & Cook P7. It's a very basic gun. It does have a lot of built-in internal safeties, but all of them happen automatically. You grip the gun, pull the trigger, it goes bang. Problem with that is, if I grip the gun like I normally shoot it, take my finger off the trigger, shove it into my holster, and something catches the trigger, holds the trigger back as I'm pushing it in, I don't realize it's happening, and boom. I have a piece of flesh miss missing in an area that I would just as soon not have it missing, which would pretty much be any part of my body. So, by doing this simple thing, 
when I put my thumb on back, it's impossible for me to have the thumb on the back of the firearm and have any part of my hand in adequate contact with the grip safety to engage the grip safety. Consequently, if my thumb is here and I holster it, if something gets into the trigger guard and pulls the trigger back, the gun cannot fire because the grip safety is not depressed. One little extra layer of safety. That's one of the reasons why I personally like a grip safety on a gun that has no other external manually manipulated safeties. If it has a frame mounted safety or a slide mounted safety or a grip cocker or anything like that that can be manually manipulated other than the classic trigger tongue of so many guns, then uh, you know, you've got that external safety so you don't need a grip safety. So it's a superfluous thing on the classic 1911. However, on this gun, it's a handy thing. Just one upholstering, thumb on the back of the frame, push it in, I know I'm safe. Very simple thing to do. That's very quick and basic holstering.